Hey, uh, today we're going to be talking about cooking alternatives for you in a grid down or power out scenario. Okay, so first we're going to start with the simplest. There's a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, first and foremost, in this country we live under a very wide, wide variety of conditions. Some of us live out in the woods and we have huge front yards with fire pits, outside kitchens, you name it. Others of us might live in a little 400 foot square efficiency apartment. If you're lucky, you got a window, maybe a fire escape, but you still need to eat. Uh, in the event of a power outage cost, if you're in the city, restaurants are going to be closed in most cases. You're going to be forced to eat what you got on hand. Uh, store inventories probably won't last long, so that's going to be an issue. So you're going to be stuck with what you got. So the thing we want to think about and talk about today is different cooking options, where they can be used, which ones, why maybe one might be the best for you and somebody else may be totally the wrong thing. And some of them can even be dangerous. So we're going to have a little talk about that. All days, everybody had uh, barbecue grills, especially around here. It took years for propane grills to become a thing. So everybody had these big... They look like flying saucers, you know. They were these big round barbecue grills, and they had a big round grill. They look like a giant wok on legs. Now you fill them full of charcoal. Uncle Charlie would come out and he'd dump all kinds of, I don't know, saw gas or something on there and fire it up. And you'd all sit around for half an hour, wait for that to burn, and all the charcoals would turn mostly white, and you'd get about your business. Okay, it takes a long time. The charcoal's a one-shot deal, so you got to have a lifetime supply of that, right? Uh, also, something you can't do indoors. All of these first group of cookers are going to be kind of an extension of that. Um, you can get hibachis, which are really cool because you they don't take much charcoal, so you don't have to use a lot at once. They have the two little grills. They go on top. You know, Those work really good. They're like a mini barbecue grill. You could take that on your fire escape and you, if you're in the city. And you could cook a meal. Um, I guess next on the list would be stuff like this. This particular one is called Nature's Grill. And this cardboard box is made to be basically unwrapped. And maybe you take the cover off the top and you basically light it on fire. It's got its own tender accelerant and it's got its own charcoal. And it's even got its own little bamboo wooden um, grill that goes over the top of it that you can set your frying pan on or put your meat on or whatever you're going to cook. I have absolutely, I, I've never used one of these, but I have the absolute utmost confidence this is going to work just fine outdoors. Um, also, I probably wouldn't just go set it on the hood of my truck and fire it up because this thing is going to get, even though it's got like lava rock as a base, supposedly, um, uh, it's going to get hot. <laughs> so if you had like a cement block or something like that, you could set it on. You'd be good. It's supposed to burn for 60 minutes approximately. And that's long enough to cook a complete meal. But, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the cost is on these, but they're a one shot deal. So you, you're going to look at at least maybe two of these a day. They're a good rig. I'm not saying they're not, they're kind, they're kind of a novelty, and they're for somebody that doesn't already have camping gear, you know, and stuff like that. Or maybe they don't do stuff outside. Like I said, we all live under different circumstances. So, another alternative would be the old-style military uh, trioxane folding stoves. Basically, all they are is a little folding stand. You have a fuel tab or a can of Sterno that you put in there and you light it. It's alcohol fuel. Uh, cooks your food, the fuel burns in the trioxane, the fuel, that tab is going to is burned till it's out, so it's a one-shot deal, but you're still left with a stand, so you can use that over and over again, so if you have a supply of fuel bars, uh, very usable, the stands are pretty rugged, almost every government made one and gave it to their troops at one point, so they're around, and the fuel bars are pretty much all the same, they're like a little they look like a little piece of a bar of soap. You just stick it in there and light it. Sterno is another thing. Comes in a can. The advantage to Sterno, you can put that out and relight it again later. So you can use that as much as you need it. And Sterno, 
I might take a chance on using Sterno indoors. I don't think I'd use the trioxane indoors. But uh, those are still pretty crude ways of cooking. At World War II time, our government was looking for somebody to provide our troops with something better to cook on and to feel. And Coleman came out with what they call the uh, pocket stove, or they uh, was it actually the camp stove, pocket stove. It's an individual cooking stove, but actually it's it'll probably feed four or five people. I don't have one of the original stoves here. They're pretty expensive, but I'm going to show you the modern day equivalent. And this stove I still really love a lot. Now the old ones were just like this. Uh, I think they might have been black. Uh, they looked a lot like that. And they're designed to run on liquid fuel, which in the old days, in the military, we're talking about mo gas, right? Which is like, uh, well, it's gasoline. We'll just call it gasoline. They run best on naphtha, and that's uh, basically some Coleman fuel. It's more pure, but they will run on gasoline, especially the newer ones. You look, and they'll say dual fuel. Anything that says dual fuel will run on gasoline and Coleman fuel. Um, but back to the original story. The, the original ones were made to run that way anyway because they were military, and they had to use what the troops had. Same as with their Zippo lighters. Whatever they had, they could dump it in there for fuel, and the Zippo would light. Sometimes it might have a bigger flame than others, depending on what you had for fuel. But they kind of work the same way. It's liquid fuel. So to get it to work, essentially what you need to do is you... You come over here, you put your liquid fuel goes in here, that's your filler cap. You want to be careful not to fill it up too far. That's very dangerous. If you fill it up too far, you really got to have some, some head space in there that's room for the actual gas that you're burning. You're not burning the liquid, you're actually burning the fumes. So when you pump this up, you're pressurizing this tank, and those fumes come up through, and they burn pretty easy. Basically, all you do is turn this knob, you know, you, you pump it up to pressure so it feels like you got good pressure, push it all the way in, turn it to lock it. You got this little knob over here. That, that little knob, if you can see it, that regulates your heat. It also turns your fuel on and off. Now, they're pretty easy to light. Now, now that that's been pumped up, I'm just going to turn this knob a little bit. And you hear the gas, and it's lit, just like that. Once it gets hot, that orange flame dies down, it becomes blue. You can regulate the fire way down to almost absolutely nothing. So, these old stoves were actually capable of simmering. A lot of the new ones, they made to boil water so you can put them in, you know, uh, backpack and mail. So that's all they're made for. You can do that with this stove, stove right here, but you could also cook spaghetti. You could, um, I mean, literally, you could put a pot of water on there and cook a whole meal of spaghetti on one of these little stoves. Um, they were a great little rig. So, of course, Coleman, they kept making them for outdoorsmen and campers. Now, a lot of the newer ones, uh, you know, after the war, were bigger. They had a big base on them, like a Coleman lantern, a newer one does. The original ones were small, maybe even smaller than this, but they work the same way. This one here, you know, is a new model. It's got legs, and you can fold it out for more stability. It also gives you a wider footprint, so you can put a big old cast iron pan on there. And again, the ability to simmer. You can low cook stuff without burning it. Run This one, like I said, because it's a dual fuel, It's a, this is a Coleman Feather 442. I'm pretty sure that they are still available, but it's Coleman Peak One or Exponent or whatever you want to call it. They're not cheap. I've had this stove probably close to 30 years, and I've never had a problem with it. Never, not once. It always works. It's been on countless hunting and ice fishing expeditions. To me, if, if, if it was the apocalypse and I either was going to be on foot or even if I was at home, this still would be a good option. The only downside to it, again, the fumes. You're basically burning one type of gasoline or another, and it's going into the air. Now, uh, 
in your house indoors, that's bad. You can poison yourself with that. You always want to make sure you've got a window open. You're not using it for heat. You're just using it to cook on. Okay. After the war, GIs came home. You know, people were living the good life. They were having a good time, you know, and they, they were looking for things to do, you know, for recreational purposes. They bought motorcycles, a lot of surplus ones from the military, Jeeps, and they, a lot of them went camping, you know. So Coleman started switching their mindset more to camping gear. And they thought, hey, it would be a great idea if we took one of these and we made it in a bigger, like a suitcase format with more than one burner. So you could have different things cooking at the same time. You might have potatoes over here and you might have steak over here, two different fry pans. Might be cooking some vegetables on one side, you know, something else on the other. And they basically ran the same way. They had a big metal tank that is stored inside the unit that comes out, the generator sticks in the pipe. Again, you pump the thing up, close the valve, open the throttle, light her up. And then we bought one <laughs> in the great prepper wake up for us <laughs> of 1998. We had a nice storm. So we bought the stove. It has worked great. We've used it a lot. It's fantastic. It's gone camping with us. Um, I've had campers that had a stove hooked to the outside of the camper. So we could cook outside on those. And I still always took a Coleman stove with us. And we still always used that for certain things. As time went by, there tended to be a lot more problems with the Coleman stuff with liquid fuel. I'm not going to tell you they're not dangerous. They are. You've basically taken a can of gasoline and you're pumping it up to pressure and it's pressurized gasoline. <laughs> I don't need to connect those dots for you. And if it's naphtha, so it's Coleman fuel, it's even more flammable, even more explosive. That's why you always want to be careful about your fill levels. You know, you can't go screwing around with them and moving them and sloshing them. You have to be careful, you know, lighting them. You have to know how to light them. Know what you saw that one puff up and you have to know that's going to happen and be used to that kind of thing to be able to use one right. But eventually Coleman said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could come up with something that we could make that, you know, would be a little more user friendly and uh, maybe safe for everyone involved. It, it, I'm going to confess, it took me years to get on this bandwagon because... All of our stuff was white gas. It all took liquid Coleman fuel, and we stayed that way for decades. So we switched to this little baby right here. This is a Coleman propane stove. It's just like the old white gas stoves in a lot of ways. You still got your, your top that falls out, and your sides that deflect wind. You can put that up. That gives you a windbreak, you know, from the wind blowing the fire out. You got your two burners. And even though you have to light this one with a match or with a lighter, being propane, it's so much easier. It's crazy easy. And, again, it runs on a regular propane gas cylinder. So, as long as you have... A good supply of those little, what are the two pound or whatever they are, propane cylinders. You'll be good for a long time, and the cylinders last quite a while. I mean, uh, within reason. You're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna empty a cylinder a day unless you're one of those people that feels you need to run your light 24/7. And both of these, I would say, with proper ventilation, and all that, would I say you can use them indoors. I will tell you that for close to a month, we actually cooked on this stove right here on this island in this house because we didn't have any other utilities when we first moved in. We didn't have any choice. It was winter time. It was the middle of January. So it didn't kill us. We just always cracked a window. And because of a lot of the other stuff that Coleman offers, it was very easy. It was, uh, it made things a lot easier for us living off grid, even when we didn't have our big propane system hooked up, we were able to use this stuff and still live in our house and cook our meals for a long time. 
So if this thing looks used, <laughs> that's a good reason for that because it has been used. Now, we went through a few propane cylinders and I had always wanted a way to, I don't know, give it a little longer duration. Now, you can fill, they sell adapters, you can fill these little cylinders from a, from a barbecue tank. And you can do that, that's fine. But if you, uh, if you go out to a sporting goods store, you can buy one of these. This is an adapter hose. On one end, it looks to your stove, it's the same threads as your gas bottle. And you just have that knurled knot that pulls it in there and tightens it up. And then this end hooks to your 20 pound gas cylinder off your barbecue grill, if you have one. Well now, you got a lot of gas, it's just like your barbecue grill. Of course, if you have a barbecue grill and it's warm out, you're probably gonna wanna be throwing the T-bones on that to cook, <laughs> first of all. But I'm talking about indoor cooking here. You know, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm, trying, what I'm trying to get you to is we're talking about power outage, not recreating. So uh, to make things even easier, you might also want to consider, and they're not expensive, I mean, for what they are, I don't think they're expensive. What it does is the base here, this fitting, that threads onto your natural gas bottle, and you can add height to your stem. You have an on and off here, and you have several other outlets. Now, these have like a needle valve in them, so they won't leak gas unless you actually screw something into them, but you still should use these little covers just to keep crap from getting out, you know, into them. And if you look, you'll discover that your lantern will come right off from this bottle and screw it onto this mast, which screws onto this mast, which screws onto your propane bottle. I think you see where I'm going with this. So now you've got the light four or five feet in the air, depending on how long of a mast you buy. And then you use your hose to connect from one of these outlets to your stove. So now you've got a little kitchen set up. You've got one propane cylinder and it's powering your light and it's also powering your stove. But the, uh, the beauty of it being all in one system, you get yourself a little mini kitchen set up there. And as long as you've got a window open, <laughs> you're gonna be good for a really long time. Something that's more short term, that does things quick. This is a MSR, just Mountain Safety Research pocket rocket. Again, I've had this stove probably 10 years and I don't believe I've used it more than two or three times. I usually use MSR fuel, but we have this can of Coleman fuel. It's kind of the same thing. It's uh, Butane and propane mixed. I don't know what the exact what the exact uh, ratio is, but these are also fairly easy to use. You just, you know, obviously you saw me take this out of the little box, which is really it takes up almost no room. You when they call it a you know pocket rocket, uh, that would almost fit. It would fit in a coat pocket, but I mean that's that's as big as the whole box is. So you take that out. And you take this with your gas cylinder and you thread it on just like that. You pull these down, those are what your pots sit on. You got this one little valve that you open on your lighter, bango, just like that. And as the saying goes, now you're cooking with gas. But the problem with this is, if you look at it, it's good and bad. That's quite an aggressive flame. It's made to boil a quart of water, basically a quart, 16 ounces, depending on what you're cooking. It's made to uh, boil at as fast as possible so you can dump it into a freeze dried meal. You want to make coffee? That'll do it in a hurry. All you got to do is have hot water. That will do it. Again, uh, Probably not the best for indoors, but definitely better than uh, white gas liquid fuel Coleman's. The downside to this is these cylinders. They're fairly expensive. They're fairly bulky. 
as long as you have a bunch of them around, you'll be good for a long time. I mean, they're out there. You can get them. I don't know if they're as common as the propane cylinders that you'd buy for a Coleman or for your propane torch, which the other ones run on. But you can get them. I mean, they're out there. And they're not ridiculously expensive. The stoves are not ridiculously expensive. They're fairly, fairly cheap. Hope you've uh, enjoyed our little talk today. So come back and see us again. Once again, this is Scott. Whiskey and Sunshine Off-Grid.